Welcome to Monday. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Radio News Hour and Patriot Trading Group. How you doing? Wow. I mean, so many things to talk about. I'll leave it to others to talk about the horrible tragedies over the weekend. Uh, the president was out talking about gun control and and making some kind of a deal tied to immigration. But we'll leave that somewhere else here. This is about financial well-being and we got a lot a lot a lot a lot to talk about uh china has started the retaliation i'm going to break it all down for you uh and, and again this whole time i told you told you what was going to happen talked about gold how many times Right, uh, gold's up another twenty-five dollars again this morning. Another new six-year high. Get ready, keep get, keep getting ready to hear it. And it's not a straight line. It's not. But I, as I told you, when gold broke fourteen hundred, right, it's going to fifteen thirty-five because there's just nothing there. Uh, I didn't mean it was going to be overnight, but soon, right? And you think about when it broke fourteen hundred. That was what I don't know. 30, 40 days ago, right? And so, you know, here we are, uh, 1465, right? 1465. And and I and, and 1535, and, there, and then there's a little bit from 1535 to really about 1580. And let's call it 1600, keep it simple. And then there's nothing from 1580, 1600, all the way to 1700. Uh, so, depending on how this plays out, uh, you know, you're going to see gold somewhere, you know, in that. And I know it's a big window, fifteen to 1700 at year end, but that's just what it seems to be. The Dow's down 600 points right now, uh, below 26,000, back 25,000 and change. The S&P's down 67 points. The NASDAQ's down 240 points. Uh, a bad day for Apple. Uh, of course, the, obviously, these tariffs now, we talked about this last week, these are unfinished goods. In other words, they come to the U.S. already built and going straight to the shelves. Uh, China China retaliated. We'll talk about that, uh, what that means for the dollar, what that means for the Fed's funds rate. Uh, and, of course, the president not going to be happy about it. Uh, we also had ISM non-manufacturing. So we know that right, manufacturing has been slowing. This was the non-manufacturing number uh, that came out today as well. Uh, and I'll give you all the details on that. They're all kind of tied together. Uh, our toll-free number again, 800-951-0592. Uh, the website at allamericangold.com. Uh, that that is, uh, you know, we got the metals plan out there. You can order online. All the the news, the views, the articles, most of the stuff that's out there, we don't even have time to get to. The show's only an hour, so it goes quick. We don't have all the time to break it all down for you. Uh, we'll also update you on those Class A trucks again. More bad news there. Uh, on Class A trucks. This is your, you know, the worker economy, right, from your big rigs and, and the trucks that drive around town, you know, the flatbeds and all those things. Uh, these are the uh, the the main uh, component, if you will, of our economy out there, uh, down 81%. The best month this year, down 52%. Uh, by the way, this last month was the worst month, down 81%. But we've been trending in that direction. We started at 52, then it went to like 60, then it went to 70. Uh, now over 80% down. Uh, so a lot of things for us uh, to talk about. The dollar's down big today, uh, mostly because, they, you know, like I said the other day, more rate hikes are probably coming. And I've got a question for everybody. Do you believe, do you believe that the Trump administration wasn't talking to the Federal Reserve? I mean, I guess you either got to believe that, 
Right now, and we know, right, the president has called Jay Powell a number of times. And I think about that horrible, horrible press conference Jay Powell had last week. I can't, I can't get it out of my head. It, it was almost like, are, is this sabotage? What can this guy be thinking? And they talk about how, man, there wasn't one dissenter, there was two dissenters, and, and kind of acting like, hey, listen, this is just a, a one-time deal, right? There's a one-off rate cut. Kind of make up for our mistake in December. Listen, you can't recover from mistakes like that. Right? You can't recover from mistakes like that. And I'm thinking to myself, so you weren't talking to the Trump administration, right? Because obviously, what, within 48 hours of that meeting, we added these new tariffs, right? So we, I got to believe that they were totally in the dark about it, right? Because I don't think anybody out there that with an IQ higher than room temperature is like, oh yeah, the economy is going to be great with these new tariffs. I mean, it, it's it's defying logic. You know, Jason and I are having this debate. You know, right? we're having this debate about whether or not they're trying to make sure Trump wins, or if they're trying to sabotage him. I, I'm starting to think sabotage. I mean, Steve Mnuchin's a golden sky, so I don't know. Just something to think about. Picture Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800 951 uh, So the Dow's down another 600 points. So it's been a tough, tough week or so for the Dow. Uh, the S&P, the NASDAQ going along with it. Gold at new um, six-year highs. Uh, 16 or 14, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, not much, Uh, 14.65 right now uh, on gold. You know, gold's up, what, 250 in the last uh, 12 months, and it's just getting started. So here's the news out of the day. China devalued the yuan today, the renminbi. So on the renminbi, there's two types of renminbi. Uh, you've got the one where the Chinese government controls it. And then you have what they call the offshore one, uh, which is kind of Hong Kong, if you will. Uh, by the way, Roy, riots there. Listen, that's going to end badly as well. I got a news flash for you. That's going to end badly as well. The, uh, the offshore one trades a lot more, okay, because the Chinese government lets it. But it broke seven to the dollar. So remember when we were all flipping out about China being a currency manipulator and blah, 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 blah. The renminbi had gotten almost to six dollars, right? So you needed six renminbi for one dollar. And this seven was a big, big point of resistance, Kind of like fourteen hundred dollar gold, right? Big point of resistance, and uh, just destroyed it. Uh, the the Chinese controlled renminbi now at seven point zero five uh, renminbi to the dollar. The offshore one seven point one one renminbi to the dollar, and, and here you go, right? The currency war is now on uh, China. You know, and, and I don't blame the Chinese. Listen, their economy's having effects too, so they're, yeah, hey, we're going to let it go lower. And I go back to what I was saying before. I mean, did we did we not have, right, I got to believe that we don't talk to our central bank. Right? I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, this, is, and, and here's the sample. So they said, Okay, it's on now. We'll let the currency go to where it's supposed to. I think China was actually deliberately holding it below seven until they said, "Okay, now, now, ah, you, you figured us out. You got us, 
Right? They're like, ah, you got me. We were never making a deal. <laughs> you got me. Okay. All right. Let's say let's let's end this Renimbi thing. Right? I, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if we're starting to talk about eight to the dollar. Right? All the way back. Right now at seven. This is the 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 weakest the Chinese currency's been in like twelve years. I mean, we just wiped it all out, gone. And uh, I think we could go to eight again, back to where it used to be, right? I mean, the Chinese are never agreeing to this uh, trade deal. They're just not, at least not the way it is now, where, hey, uh, we get to own everything, right? Uh, If you want to agree to that, we're good to go. And then they keep saying, you know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna long play. We're gonna wait for the election. And, and I don't know. And tomorrow I have the right to change my mind. But I think the Federal Reserve fully knew that we were going to hit China with these tariffs. I believe that they knew it. They knew it before that meeting, and they just simply said, eh. Right, Jay Powell, I don't like Donald Trump, and I'm going to blow it all up. Yeah, I cut the rate, but I gave all I gave a horrible press conference on purpose. Right, because what would have hurt? Hey, it's unanimous. Let's cut rates. And by the way, we're dovish, and we're worried about trade and global slowdown. That's all he needed to say. But he didn't. But he didn't. And, of course, is anybody surprised at what China was going to do? What did they really think they were going to do? Oh, you know what? Oh, well, okay, well, now, now we'll negotiate. No. Right? Then they said, that's it, agriculture, gone. Right now, now, I don't know. Obviously, they weren't buying very much, right, or at least according, you know, according to the president. And I don't know if... If they were buying some things the whole time, right? But obviously we wanted them to ramp up the purchases, and the ramp up wasn't a whole lot. But China also announced it will not buy any U.S. agriculture products. So I don't know. I don't know enough about it to know if if they've been buying some the whole time, just a, a, a reduced amount or if this is new news. I mean, the way Wall Street's reacting today kind of leads me to believe that they were still buying some. So more bad news uh, for the for the farmers, right, which are, let's face it, right, they're diehard Trump supporters, most farmers, conservative people. I mean, is there something bigger at work here? I mean, it blows my mind. It's not like... Uh, all of a sudden, the Fed the Fed does a bad job, and then Donald Trump says, "Let's go slap the tariffs on them." And I know you can believe these stories. There is a big debate and an argument, and whether there was or wasn't doesn't matter. I mean, do, or is it that the bankers were telling the central bank, "Oh, don't worry, we we've got Donald. He'll do what we say. He won't do it." He likes Wall Street too much to do it. And Trump did it anyway. I mean, either way, either we, we've got to either we've got this problem where our government and our central bank are not communicating. Because you gotta remember, everybody else are working together. The government and the central bank are one and the same. And and I know we like to pretend that's not the case here, but time to wake up. Time to wake up. And I've been telling you how long the president has been telling you to buy gold for how long now? Right? Rates are going to zero. I know there's people out there that say, no, 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 it's going to be fine. No, no, it's not. It's not how rate cycles work. And they say, oh, well, one time in the 90s. Right? You know, we're not in the 90s. I wish we were still in the 90s. I mean, one time in the 90s when the debt was $4 trillion, uh, they only did three rate cuts once. 
That's what we're going on? That's what we're going on? Are you kidding me? Was there a trade war going on? No? There wasn't? Oh. Were we running trillion dollar? Well, they admit the trillion dollar damage. Was that going on? No. That wasn't happening either. Right? And, and, and so you start looking at this, and you, it just leaves you scratching your head. Right? Everybody, and of course, this is what the president has been talking about. Right? This is what he's been saying. Hey, listen, man, we, we this is it. This is the battle here. Right? We're not having a trade war about bringing some jobs back home. This is about how much longer is the dollar going to be the reserve currency of the world and our central banks acting like what? Nothing's happening. Right? It does. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't want. I, I don't believe it. I think they knew the whole time, and you know what? They just hate the president and said, you know what? Ah, we're going to act like it's not happening, right? They're going to go have a little temper tantrum in the corner because their economic policy doesn't work. Quarter point rate cut, please, please. China stroke of a pen this morning. Bam. There you go. Here's what we think of your quarter point rate cut, Jay Powell. Bam! Gone. German 10 year boons, right? Negative half of a percent. The Spaniards are down to two tenths, right? The whole world's going negative. We better wake up. We better wake up. Right now, it's just all starting to make sense, isn't it? All these central banks, by I, I'm worried. That's the other part. So now China has also threw in a caveat on this. Hey, we're starting with this. And then, of course, right, they're going to, oh, well, hey, you know, we're not doing it. We're just letting the market do it. And really, you know, you kind of think about, yeah, well, you know, if I was a currency, a Chinese currency trader, and I'm looking at what's happening, I'd be like, yeah, the renminbi's got to go weaker, right? It's got to go low. It's got to go a lot lower. Lot, lot lower. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching it all and I'm thinking to myself, you know, where are we really headed with all of this? And you start thinking about all of the, what, like, remember what UBS and Credit Suisse announced last week? Hey, we're going to start charging our depositors. How long do you think we got? And I know, right? Oh, no, the economy this and the economy that. Listen, it's not that great. You know it. Everyone's working. You know, this is what I feel about the economy. Everyone's working. Just don't know that anyone's making any money. You know? Right? I look at credit card balances always rising, defaults rising, right? You, you look, you know, homes, a 10-year note is down to 175. And, and and I'm thinking about in what economic textbook does the ten year note even in their line inflation rate? They're saying, hey, the ten year note isn't even gonna return the rate of inflation. Who would do that? Right? Would you lend your money only to get back less? Right, but they're saying that this is now a, a perfectly normal economic event. Right? Remember the the, the doubt it was at all time highs. Oh man, I don't know. Uh loss is starting to pick up a little bit here, down six fifty five, six sixty five. Uh, on the Dow as as we continue to watch. Uh, the Chinese have uh, devalued the renminbi. Uh, they've said, if and, and again, I don't know how much agriculture they were purchasing, but it seems like it was quite a bit more than zero. Uh, they have banned all purchases of U.S. agriculture products, and then they said more to come if the United States goes ahead in 20, 
five, 26 days and puts the tariff on. I think the next big question is going to probably be what? Treasuries. Right? We already know that they've slowed it down dramatically. Right? They've been shrinking their treasury holdings. Is it going to quicken? Is that pace going to quicken? Is the amount of gold that they've been buying going to increase? This is something I didn't I didn't factor this in. I did. I, I actually thought that we'd probably sit here for a while before the the next you know, the, the trade I guess the the ten percent that he put on, I thought we had he's gonna wait a little while. But but now you you start thinking about what's really at stake, right? They're you know, hey, maybe he's not gonna win. Maybe they're trying to set him up so he doesn't win. I don't know. Just that press conference and then what happened in the in within 48 hours of it just leaves me scratching my head. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily broadcast from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a national volunteer organization founded by Phyllis Schlafly and continuing to uphold her legacy by honoring family values, opposing radical feminism, and representing a conservative perspective in our nation's capital. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. Polling data from Iowa, where the first presidential nomination ballots will be cast next February, shows a Democratic Party wishing that some of their candidates would just drop out of the race. Even before the first round of presidential debates, CNN's polling showed that grassroots Democrats already wanted fewer contestants. Nearly 80 percent of the likely Democrat caucus voters in Iowa indicated their displeasure in a poll by the Des Moines Register and CNN at the large number of choices among candidates. But perhaps their real dismay is at who some of those candidates are. Bill de Blasio, for example, the mayor of New York City, is one of the more than two dozen candidates who began the race for president on the Democratic side. He scored a perfect zero percent support in an early poll of caucus voters. De Blasio's supporters for president, if he had any, might have said that Iowa's a long way from his liberal base in New York City. But even in New York State, where Democrats vastly outnumber Republicans, de Blasio's 29 percent approval rating is lower than that of Republican President Donald Trump. It's a mystery why the ultra-liberal de Blasio is even running for president, despite having such a low approval rating in his heavily Democratic home state. In that early poll, more than 75 percent of the candidates for the Democrat nomination had 2 percent or less support among likely Iowa caucus voters, which makes their bids exceedingly implausible. History shows that only candidates who fare well in Iowa, placing in the top two or three, have a viable chance to win the nomination. Undeterred, the would-be contenders continue to pitch their candidacies to the Iowa Democrats, perhaps digging their own graves along the way. The left wants nothing more than to remove Trump from office, and prospective nominees are entertaining calls for his impeachment every day. Ultimately, that radical notion of impeachment drives Americans further away. No one should be surprised that Democrats couldn't be less excited about their field of candidates for replacing Donald Trump. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. As President Trump fulfills his campaign promises, his accomplishments on trade, immigration, the economy, and protecting the unborn should be celebrated, not ignored or diminished. To track these victories, go to phyllisschlafly.com and find out what's next for the Trump presidency at phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Uh, Perkins and Marie Callender's uh, filing bankruptcy. Uh, things, things are happening quickly here. Uh, 800-951-0592. Uh, like I said, gold's up 19, 20 bucks. Uh, $1,465. Uh, U.S. $20 gold pieces at $1,550 this morning at 800 951 Nine two and and you know we're just trying to p- put the pieces together. We had the ISM non manufacturing report out. So this is hey, it's yeah, maybe manufacturing slowing, but the other side of the economy doing well. 
Growth in the U.S. service sector act, uh, activity unexpectedly slowed. This was a July number. Okay, so this was uh, the, the, the July number being released this morning. The index fell to 53.7. As we know in this, these indexes, 50 is anything below 50 is contraction. Anything above 50, is, is you're growing. But here's the problem. This was a number in the low 60s at the beginning of the year. We're now in the low 50s uh, for this reading. This is the lowest reading since August of 2016. By the way, the manufacturing index, remember, we did that last week, was in the 40s. Uh, so so uh, not what they were hoping for. They were hoping for a 55.5. June was at 55.1. July at 55.7. And here's the, the part that, that really makes me wonder. This was before. The survey was done before the tariffs were announced. Remember, we didn't announce the tariffs until August. Right? The Fed meeting was on the 31st of July. And then, then the, the president announced the tariffs, what, I think on August 2nd. So so not a not a great report. This is this kind of took the Dow down another leg. Right? This was the, the Dow was down. 350, 400. This put it down 500, 600. Uh, right now down 650. Uh, as everybody's chiming in about the effects of what China did this morning, the devaluation, and it's a race to the bottom. Yeah, and I and uh, by the way, U.S. banks under a lot of pressure today. Uh, some of the biggest losers uh, in the market today. Uh, the 10-year note escalating down uh, 174 now, 174, uh, as it continues to go backwards. Remember, the all-time low was 137. But you got to remember, that was when rates were zero. And even then, it didn't stay there very long. Even at zero rates, the 10-year note was in that one and a half, one six. So to see it here at one seven four, with a what two to two and a quarter, I guess that's the official word from the central bank, uh, from the Federal Reserve. How low are we going to go this time? Right now, everybody's saying that the Fed is now going to cut again in September. That remains to be seen. Uh, I do believe we're going to get another rate cut. And we actually may get two this year. If we don't get two more, I mean two more. So in other words, uh, we cut once. I know we'll cut at least one more time, potentially two more times before the end of the year. But even if we only cut one more time, they'll be talking about how many rate cuts they're going to do in 2020. Uh, I actually am in the camp now where I think we're going to cut three times this year. So we've cut once. I think we got two more cuts this year, which will put us at, what, one and a half? Uh, and I wouldn't be, you know, here's the problem. They don't like cutting rates near the presidential election. So could the central bank kind of withhold any additional rate cuts because they don't want to, quote-unquote, influence the election, which would be bad news for, for Trump? <clears throat> I don't know. Just interesting, right? I, I mean, I'm just sitting there, and, I, and I'm thinking about it, and, and, and I just I can't get it out of my mind. I don't think that the central bank was in the dark about what the president was planning on doing when it came to tariffs. Obviously, I think the Chinese response is everybody expected this, right? Is anybody shocked that they devalued the renminbi? I don't think anybody's shocked, right? I mean, it was sitting around six six eight five to six nine five, you know, ever since. Uh, the, we got no deal. Remember, go back. Think about this. 
was what, April? We were supposed to, oh, we're, we may have a deal next week. <laughs> uh, I guess not. And now I'm, I, 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 that's just the way I see it. I think we're going uh, to get a Fed that is going to cut rates two more times this year because they were, will, I don't think they'll want to cut rates next year, but we need them. We need them. So this is just the beginning. I mean, everyone thinks China's going to stop. China's going to give up. Right? They, they want to be number one. Right? This is kind of the ultimate game of chicken, right? Who's going who's gonna to blink first? The difference is China's central bank and the Chinese government are one and the same. Here, I'm just thinking, I don't, you know, and again, I don't know. But it just seems like to me this was a huge, huge betrayal and a slap in the face uh, to the president what the central bank did last week. Uh, if I'm right and they actually knew, which I can't, I just can't fathom any scenario where they didn't know. How did they not know? 800 951 0592. Uh, is Dow now approaching down, uh, approaching 700 points down. And again, this is just the overpriced. We're going to have a trade deal, right? Wall Street always too optimistic. So, so the Dow falling today and falling all last week, and and probably got more to fall again. I don't think anything other than listen. These guys are, are they don't want to see what is true and obvious, and now all of a sudden everything's going to look expensive, right? Intel. Nike, Caterpillar, Apple, the banks now under margin pressure. Take the radio news hour. We'll be back after the break. 800 951 That is our toll free number. Uh, $20 Saints, $20 Libs, $15.50. I've got some backdate silver eagles. This is a good price too, three seventy. So about two bucks. Yeah, about two bucks over. A little uh, two ten over spot. Uh, got a couple of cases backdate silver eagles. Uh, three hundred seventy bucks today at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. So when you buy silver eagles for less than junk silver, yeah, you jump on that one for sure. Uh, Dow's down seven hundred. We need to talk about crude oil as well. So last week, crude oil got crushed, uh, lost like six or seven dollars a barrel. But something that we haven't talked at all about, you know, we've got this huge growth in crude production, right? We've talked about that. We know that, right? We're now like the largest. No one produces more crude a day than us, right? We're somewhere around 12 million barrels a day. I learned this last week, and shame on me for taking so long. There's a problem with the crude that we're getting. Okay, so we have light crude, we have heavy crude, right? Here in the U.S., we have mostly the light crude, um, but our refiners can only refine certain types of crude oil. So if it's too light or too heavy, they can't refine it. Apparently, the growth in production is a crude that, and again, and I apologize if I, I think it's too light. Now, of course, I may be wrong, it may be too heavy, but we can't actually refine it. So they're not getting the spot price. Matter of fact, they're getting well below spot price 
because the crude, what they need to do, and let's go on the assumption it was too light to be refined. They need to mix it with a crude that's too heavy in order to be able to use it. So obviously, right, there's expense in there. And now if, and again, crude oil down not too bad, but down again today. I mean, down big on Friday. Uh, 55 bucks in the new month contract. So crude oil was in the 60s, uh, down into the 50s. Going to be very interesting if this slowdown continues. And if China decides that they're going to say to heck with the United States and tell the Iranians, hey, we'll buy all your crude. And we'll send some ships down. So if the U.S. wants to start World War III, we'll let them. I'm not saying that's the case. Right, but it's been thrown out there. It's another one of the things that China could do. That would probably take ten dollars a barrel off the price of crude uh, if uh, China was going to allow the Iranians to reopen the spigot and really, really put our crude production in trouble. Right, that basin, that Permian basin, uh, that shale type drilling crude. Uh, so just another thing, so many things to keep our eyes on. I didn't know it. I thought it was just the same crude that we were getting everywhere else, right? And, and why not? Hey, we don't need to uh, import any crude. It's part of the reason why we keep importing crude is we need the heavy stuff. That, you know, like the uh, like Canada produces, and we don't get crude really from the Middle East very much. Africa, same thing. But we need that so we can mix it with that other stuff that we're getting so it's actually usable. Yeah, so go, go figure. Uh, so uh, keep our eyes out. By the way, uh, they're saying that Basin crude now is drawing less than $50 a barrel. Less than $50 a barrel. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that as well. That is an official. Nobody said that the Chinese have said it, but somebody said it. Some, I read it somewhere. Someone was like, hey, there's a lot more China could do, that being one of them, which would really, you know, I, I guess Texas would come to mind, right? Texas, the Dakotas, uh, Wyoming, right? Northern Colorado, right? We got a lot of that. Where you frack Pennsylvania, wherever the fracking is, uh, that, that you could see them take a hit uh, as well. So we'll have to see uh, as this thing starts to escalate here. Uh, again, uh, Dow is now down 750 as uh, more and more. Uh, well, where's the dollar? Let me check here. Uh, gold's up 19. The dollar, wow, down 60 basis points. Uh, one of the, wow, that's one of the biggest drops I've seen in a long time on the dollar. 97.49, 97.49 started uh, above 98. Uh, that's kind of got what, what's got gold uh, reacting to it as well. Gold's up nineteen dollars and forty cents. Fourteen sixty-five. Silver's higher as well. Silver's up eleven. Uh, Fourteen dollars. And 41 cents is the price on crude oil. Uh, 800 951 U.S. Silver Eagles, these are back dates at 1850. Or wait, 18. Yeah. Yeah, 1850. I said it right. 1850 an ounce or 370 a roll. I mean, you're talking about what? $35. Give or take, you're saving almost uh, almost two bucks an ounce. You're saving not quite two bucks an ounce savings. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Final segment coming up. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. I haven't seen this very often. The People's Bank of China, the Chinese Central Bank. Uh, is actually out issuing a statement, uh, which 
That never happens. Oh, I shouldn't say never, just happened. Uh, but very rarely do they ever say anything uh, talking about uh, crossing through seven Renembi to one U.S. dollar, uh, blaming it on the trade war, uh, that, uh, that it's not quote unquote weaponizing. Uh, they, they are a responsible major country. So this is the Chinese Central Bank communicating, my guess is this is an announcement for everybody that isn't the United States. China will abide by the spirit of the G20 su- uh, summit on the exchange rate issue and adhere to market-determined exchange rate system. We will not engage in competitive devaluation or use the exchange rate for competitive purposes. Okay. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Right? Oh, uh-huh. Neither will we use the exchange rate as a tool to deal with external pressure such as trade disputes. So the official uh, answer from the Chinese Central Bank is, hey, it's the market being the market we're not doing anything in New York. We would never. No, we would never do that. Right? Same like when you ask them, hey, are you stealing all of our intellectual property? Who, us? No. No way. I, we wouldn't do that. No, we just want all your specs just, be, you know, because we want to make sure everything's safe. Don't, yeah, no, we're not stealing it. No way. Right, so uh, yeah, you can throw that right into the uh, recycle bin. But very nice, very nice uh, talking about that they're a responsible country. And again, if I was there, I'd do it as well. Right, and, and which was why I said makes everything uh, that Jay Powell did last week just baffling to me. Uh, 800 951 Zero five nine two. The only thing up today, uh, metals, gold, silver. Uh, the Dow's down big, seven fifty. The Nasdaq's down uh, just under a hundred. The the or I'm sorry, the S and P uh, down eighty three. The Nasdaq down. They're actually percentage wide. Nasdaq's down the most, two hundred and sixty eight. Crude oil's down. Uh, gold's up fourteen sixty five. U.S. $20 gold pieces, and you can pick them. Saints and or Libs, fifteen fifty. Right, got hitting by gold now in, in the 1400s, right? You know, uh, you know, you got spot gold, fourteen sixty five, and looking like it uh, wants to go higher. Like I said, uh, I know 1500 that's more of a psychological number. Uh, the real resistance, the real first resistance point for gold is 1535. Uh, and then, like I said, there's a little bit between 1535 and 1600. Problem is, once it's 1600, there's nothing nothing in it to 1700. Uh, so, U.S. $20 liberties or saints at 1550. The deal of the day backdated rolls of silver eagles live and in stock at both places, 370. At 800 951 0592.